Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Gonna be coming to you with a, uh, another project today. So, uh, as some of you know, I've been trying to get stuff together to start welding and be able to fabricate some exhaust parts in my own garage. Uh, this week I actually went and got a bottle of gas. So we have uh, one more step closer. Um, I'm gonna be ordering some tubing here soon and we'll be able to get welding. But uh, for this exhaust project, I'm gonna be using stainless tubing. So the first time that I welded stainless, I didn't have a setup to back purge. The first exhaust that I made was, it wasn't purged, it's sugared on the inside. It's, you know, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it worked and it's what I had at the time and I wanted to do a stainless exhaust. So I just dealt with it and it's held up. It's actually the exhaust on the, uh, Mark II Jetta, so, but for this go around, I wanted to have a setup to back purge. And if any of you guys have looked into some of this stuff, dual regulators or flow meters are incredibly expensive for whatever reason, they just are. Um, like I think Miller sells one that's like $250, which if you're welding all day long and like do it consistently or run a business, like, yeah, that's great. But for a hobbyist, that's a tough price to pay. So what I'm showing you today is how to make a dual flow meter cheaply. So for this project, I have the flow meter that came with my Eastwood TIG 200 ACDC. Um, this is, you know, Eastwood standard regulator that they give with any um welder that you buy from them it's chrome plated brass for whatever reason you know it's not the you know top of the line flow meter regulator by any means but it gets the job done and these if you want to buy like one just by itself is around 80 bucks on their website this is a victor regulator flow meter combo that i happen to find laying around but um, there's actually, you know, some of these that are used, um, for sale on eBay and they're like 65 bucks. Even if you want to buy this brand new, this regulator brand new with a 10 foot gas line, you could buy for $140, which isn't that bad. But you'll notice with this one that I found the face of the gauge is missing. So and I don't really know the history of this. Like I just found this sitting in a corner and was like, Hmm, you know, great great luck but I don't know the history so I don't know if the gauge is broken and the face blew out because the tank pressure hit it or what you know but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some components from each of these and use some spare fittings here that I picked up at the local Lowe's and make a dual flow meter so I'm going to take this flow meter portion off of the regulator here, put a T where this flow meter is currently, and then I'm gonna take this front portion, which would normally connect to the bottle, and put that on one side of this T, and put this flow meter on the opposite side of that T, and because I don't know if the gauge leaks or not, I'm going to put in a plug, seems that I'll always still have this gauge. This will show me the tank pressure, this is just redundant at that point, so I don't even need it. So I'm just going to take it out of the equation instead of building this and finding out that it leaks from here because this is broken. Um, but yeah, I'm going to uh, start disassembling these and I'll walk you guys through what I'm doing. One thing to note while you're doing this is you always want to use soft jaws. This is brass. It's a soft material. If you care about how this looks, put either buy some soft jaws, these are just purchased right off of Amazon, or put you know a whole bunch of microfiber fiber cloths in the jaws so you're not marring the surface. If you don't care, you know, just clamp it and you know bite into it as hard as you want, but I don't want to do that. So soft jaws are the way to go. We're just gonna unscrew this portion. I can line up a wrench. Wow. And it comes off pretty easily. 
while I have this part clamped, I'm going to try and bust this gauge loose as well. That way it is out of the way. That portion is completely disassembled. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this plug in where the gauge was. Hopefully I have the right size wrench for this readily available. But we are also going to put some Teflon tape on this. Now this is not a very aggressive thread because it's only eighth inch NPT. So I'm not going to absolutely smother it in Teflon tape, but just do a lap around it so that I have something there to help it seal, but it's not going to stick out a ton because I put an absolute ton of Teflon tape on it. So taped up, all ready to go. Just thread it right back into the same hole. Now, you don't need to kill it. You just need it to be tight. You don't want it to, you know, you don't need to absolutely murder it. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna switch over to putting this coupler in it. So if you've noticed, the T that I bought is one male end and then two females, but this is the female end as well. So I need a male to male union to put into here. The other thing to note with putting Teflon tape on fittings is you always want to go in the same rotation of the threads. So like you thread it in this way, you want the end of your tape to follow this way. That way when you're threading it in, it's not trying to basically take your Teflon tape off. It's going in the same direction. same deal thread it in and snug it up you don't have to kill it you just have to make sure it's not going to leak and that should probably be good enough Now, what I should have done before I did that is Teflon taped the other side. You want to pay attention to where your outlet lines up to. So, like obviously, I want both of my flow meters to be, you know, vertical and parallel to each other. But I also need to pay attention to which one I want where. So, if I leave my outlet facing this way, it's going to put this uh, flow meter on the back side of my bottle and my other flow meter you know closer towards me which this is the flow meter that I'm gonna back purge off of the other flow meter is what I'm gonna use you know for the main feed into my uh, 
torch. So I'm going to leave it like this. And then I'm going to swap over. So like right now, this is what we have. Now I'm going to swap over to breaking this one apart. And I'm going to take this off of this end. All right. So I found a good way to clamp this into the vise. So now we're going to get started on taking this off. So the regulator portion of this has, oh Jesus, two, well, it has a hex head to it basically. So I've clamped on the flats of that hex into my vice jaws, but even then it's still sliding. So it looks like I'm going to do some uh, other tricks here. All right, so here's my trick, painter's tape. So anytime that I'm putting something in that, you know, the soft jaws aren't doing the job anymore, but I also don't want to screw up the surface too badly, I just put a lot of painter's tape on it and hope for the best. I mean, truly at the end of the day, if I do scratch this, it's not the worst thing in the world because... It's not something that I like super care about, but I do want things to look nice at the same time. So I try not to purposely damage stuff. It seems like Eastwood uses some really good thread sealant for these things. Now, my recommendation to anyone that's doing this at home, do not pry on this. These are just plastic, sometimes glass, depending on how old of a regulator you have. They have seals in them. They're not meant to take an immense amount of pressure by any means. Um, at least not like twisting pressure. So, you know, be careful. Do not pry on this or you will crack it. And then... It will, you know, leak the moment that you put any gas in it because you cracked that apart. So now we have these in two separate pieces. We are going to move on to reassembling, which is just the reverse of removal. Now, here is the difficult portion when you don't have enough hands to do all this, but we're going to try and use a couple wrenches. And they're roughly straight. Good enough for me. Now all we have to do is join this back to this, which once I Teflon tape that, it's going to be as easy as this. Uh, all right, got it all done and back together. Uh, so one thing that I screwed up with, which you can probably see by my face in the last video, is I did not consider this sticking out so when i was going to use this as my primary uh torch gas line i was going to put it in the front that way i could always see how much uh, argon i was flowing through my torch but um this stuck out to the point that it almost landed against the regulator which even the one that i put in uh as my front uh, flow meter, if the gauge was still there, there's no way this would be put together. Um, so it's actually a good thing that I took the gauge out uh, just because of the chance it was 
broken. Um, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to do the same thing. Uh, the other thing to note with this setup is this is a flow meter regulator uh, combo. So it has a regulator as like the lower portion of it that's built in. If you're going to do this and you're not using an Eastwood flow meter and regulator combo set, um, look into what your presets are on your regulator. So the Eastwood uh, regulator is set to 50 PSI. The Victor flow meter and regulator combo has an outlet pressure that's preset to 25 PSI. So if I was to flip flop these and use this as my primary and then this portion as my secondary and like leave the regulator in there, it'd be kind of dumb because I'd be regulating it down to 25 and then this would effectively be doing nothing because it would just be letting gas gas pass through at the pressure that it comes in um but yeah this is uh fully completed and uh now i'm going to put this on the bottle that i have and turn it on real quick and make sure that i don't have any leaks through any of these joints all right here we go see how this goes i don't hear anything leaking we had no leaks. It worked perfectly. Um, the one other thing to note, and just as a disclaimer to everybody, so that you're fully aware, doing this will void your warranty. If you buy an Eastwood TIG 200 ACDC welder and take the regulator apart that comes with it and something, you know, breaks, snaps, whatever, don't go back to Eastwood and say, you know, oh, you sent me something that's broke. Like, no, you took it apart and that's gonna avoid whatever warranty that you have on this. My welder I bought at the scratch and dent sale, Eastwood does this um, like two or three times a year that they have scratch and dent welders that are effectively half price. Um, so that's the reason that like I have this. And the only thing that's wrong with mine when I bought it was it's missing the knob to adjust the gas. That's all that's wrong with my welder. And it was effectively 50% off. So if you want a cheap welder, pay attention to Eastwood's Facebook page if you're, you know, somewhat local to Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, that is uh, going to wrap up the video for today. I uh, hope you guys found this helpful and, you know, it helps ho other hobbyists with uh, what they want to weld. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you next time.